Disciples Chairman Larry Hoover was convicted in federal court in Chicago two decades ago after continuing to run his criminal empire even as he was serving a 200-year sentence in state prison for murder. Since then, Hoover, now 70, has been serving out six life terms at the Supermax Federal Prison in Florence, Colorado. This is a facility that houses convicted terrorists and mobsters and is touted as the most secure in the county. But a new federal indictment filed earlier in the week in federal court in Southern Illinois suggests that Hoover has still been calling shots for the gangs he helped establish in Chicago in the 1960s. The indictment unsealed accused seven state and national leaders of the gangster's disciples of racketeering, conspiracy, drug trafficking, witness intimidation, and multiple murders, including the 2018 slaying of a 65-year-old ranking member of the gang. Though Hoover was not accused of wrongdoing, the indictment alleged that in September of 2014, Gangster Disciples members Anthony Dobbins and Warren Griffin discussed how Hoover had recently appointed them as board members. And this was a powerful position directly beneath Hoover that had given them authority over the gang's national operation. The charges do not state how Hoover may have made such a decision given that he was behind bars in solitary confinement. Dobbins, 53, is currently serving a sentence for drug trafficking at the same prison as Hoover and isn't due to be released until 2033. Record show. Griffin, 51, is also in federal prison in Kentucky on a separate case and is set to be released in 2025. Both Dobbins and Griffin are charged in the new indictment with racketeering and conspiracy and murder. The indictment, meanwhile, comes as Hoover has been seeking an early release from his federal sentence under the First Step Law, and this law was passed in 2018. This law had already led to reduced sentences for several of his co-defendants. Hoover's attorney, Justin Moore, said in a statement that Hoover appeared to have been added to the new indictment and without any basis, and this was an effort to spurn his request for his release. 
Moore stated there was absolutely no way for inmates at Hoover's prison to communicate with him or anything remotely gang related to outside or within the prison, let alone give any specific orders that would go undetected for years. This is a 70 year old man in the twilight of his years who has serious medical conditions and is seeking release to be finally with his wife his children and grandchildren after nearly 50 years of separation and to have his name continuously thrown into affairs of others and to be used as a scapegoat for criminal activity he has no connection and this needs to cease among those who have been charged in the new indictment was Frank Smith 47 of Naperville another gangster disciple board member who was convicted along with Hoover in the federal racketeering case in the late 1990s Smith, known by the street name Little Frank and Red Beard, was one of the organizers of the birthday celebration for Hoover in Chicago in November of 2017, according to those charges. In asking to hold Smith without bond, prosecutors said in a motion filed in Chicago on Tuesday that in the decades since his conviction, Smith's involvement in the gang has deepened and that he used his newfound stature to order the April 2018 murder of a rival during a meeting in a suburban in St. Louis Park. And that murder, which took place in broad daylight within sights of a children's playground, more than 70 shots were fired, including rounds from an AK-47 assault rifle. That attack left one victim, Leroy Allen, dead at the scene, and two others were badly wounded. In a raid on Smith's home last year, federal agents found numerous firearms, a library of hard copy gangster disciples literature, and a cell phone that revealed years worth of gang-related communication. And this allegedly included detailed efforts by Smith to identify and retaliate against witnesses, prosecutors said. Smith was also captured on federal wiretaps talking with open hostility towards government witnesses, including one intercepted call where he allegedly remarked about a celebrity defendant believed to be corroborating the motion stated. The longer it takes for somebody to whack his ass, the worse things are going to be, Smith allegedly said on the call. The indictment also accused Griffin and Dobbins of killing Ernest Don Smokey. Wilson, a rival board member during the dispute over power on Chicago's South Side, according to the indictment. Wilson, 65, was shot in the face near his home in the 7100 block of South Euclid Avenue. The Chicago Tribune reported, Officers found him unresponsive in the street in front of a mid-sized apartment building when checking the area following reports of gunfire. Ron Safer remembers the day a judge handed gangster disciple Larry Hoover a life sentence in 1998. The way the federal lockup clanged behind Hoover while, while Hoover's family watched from the courtroom. Safer helped prosecute Hoover who ran a monoletic gang from inside the Illinois prison. I remember feeling that justice had been done, Safer told the Chicago Sun-Times, but then he added, there was no joy in it. Roughly a quarter century later, another door had swung shut on Hoover. At least for now, the U.S. District Judge Harry Lindenberg Tuesday denied a bid for Hoover for a sentencing break under the First Step Act a law signed by the President Donald Trump in 2018. Leningberg previously made comments suggesting that he was open to the idea. But in a long-awaited 19-page order, Leningberg referred to the 70-year-old Hoover as one of the most notorious criminals in Illinois history. And though the judge wrote that Hoover's life sentencing at the Federal Supermax Prison in Colorado is particularly grim, he said that he's concerned about an active risk of harm if Hoover is untimely freed. Hoover is renowned and celebrated to this very day by the gangster disciples. The judge wrote, and that this is to the extent that any one person can deter another to commit crimes. Hoover's life imprisonment symbolically demonstrates that the rule of the law reaches those, even the ones in power, who seem to be untouchable. The judge issued his order without prejudice, meaning Hoover has an opportunity to try again. Hoover's attorney, Justin Moore, called that extremely rare. I don't think that this is a ruling that closes the door for Larry Hoover to be released, Moore said. Moore noted that Hoover is serving his sentence in isolation and can do little more than just read books. How do we explain to the court of the oppressive conditions he's in? 
Are prisons used to rehabilitate inmates or in a punitive fashion? Among other things, the First Step Act allows federal prisoners to seek reductions in their sentencing for selling crack cocaine based on lower penalties that were enacted in 2010. Safer has supported previous decisions by Leningberg to release co-defendants of Hoover's under the First Step Act. But then he went on to say that there are just some crimes that are so heinous that mercy conflicts with justice. He went on to state that Leningberg was right on the money when he described Hoover as one of the Illinois' most notorious criminals. Hoover ran a gang from prison that was responsible for the highest murder rate in the city, a drug network that was persuasive and efficient and is organized that controlled parks and streets and corners in the neighborhoods and made it impossible for children to go outside and be children. Still, the former federal prosecutor said it's sad he's a human being. Hoover ordered a murder in 1973 that led to his conviction in state court and a sentence of 150 to 200 years in Illinois' prison system. The feds say he ran a $100 million a year drug business as tens of thousands of gang soldiers continued to work for him in Chicago and other cities. A federal investigation led to Hoover's conviction for running a criminal enterprise. Lenny and Burr gave Hoover a life sentence in 1998 and at the end of that hearing prompted a finger-pointing confrontation between the two men. Lenny Burr told Hoover that the charisma he used to gain the loyalty of thousands was proof that he could have been a great man. You misused a great gift that you received from God, Lenny and Burr told Hoover that day. Larry Hoover has more than paid his debt to society by serving the past two decades years of his life in isolation, laboring under the dark cloud of dying there. Thanks again for watching guys. Please like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so when I make a new video and upload it, you guys will know. Until the next video, now I gotta go.